At this point, we've all seen the crazy things that can be accomplished with computer vision. Self-driving cars, medical diagnosis, real-time object detection. So I don't think that I need to sell you on that. But what I want to do is show how basic the principles are that underlie this process and the awesome complexity that can come out of such simple concepts. So let's get started. Let's say we have an image. Here's Oakley, for example. And we want a neural network to tell us what's in this image. We've got the label, he's a dog. So we set up a neural network that takes our photo as an input and we initialize it with random weights and it produces us an output, in this case, psycho. Then we train our network and that's it. Sounds pretty easy, right? Well, there is one little portion that we've kind of glossed over that's kind of important. How do we go from an image to representing it as numbers in our neural network? Because we know that the neural network doesn't just accept an image. We're calculating numbers here. Everything in a computer is a number, right? So why don't we just flatten out the image and use that as an input? We know that the image is 640 pixels tall and 480 pixels wide with three channels, R, G, and B. So we can calculate how long our input array would be. And we know that it's 921,600 input nodes. We could do that. But it turns out there might be a smarter way. The big issue with the solution I just described is that the location of a pixel is actually relevant information in an image. If we feed our image into a fully connected layers directly, all of that location information is lost. So what's a better approach? Well, let's go back to our image. And for now, let's just look at the top left. And if we look at the pixel values for the top left, the approach we talked about previously was just going to take every single one of these pixel values and read them individually. But what if we wanted to expand that context window? We could perhaps build a receptive field where we're taking in a three by three area all at once for one input. This is actually a concept that was borrowed from biology with the observation that some of the neurons in our brain tie to specific fields from within our vision. So we're taking that same concept and applying that to our neural network. So we're gonna set a specific output neuron that's gonna to correlate to this receptive field in our input image. And then we can just move that frame over the image and calculate our different neurons. So how do we do that? Just add them up. So for this first example, we'll sum up the nine numbers that are currently within our receptive field, and that's gonna be the activation of the neuron. We can then slide over to our next receptive field. In this case, we have a stride of two, so we moved our box over two pixels. We sum up the numbers and we find that 1290 is the activation for that neuron. Another two over and we can find 1142, and so on until we filled out the entire box. So now we found the convolutional output from running this three by three filter over our image. And that's how a convolution is calculated, but I did leave out one key part. Filters are actually what bring the magic to the entire process. We added all of the numbers together, which is the same as adding the values multiplied by a filter of ones. So what if they weren't just ones? Take this X filter, for example. If we applied this filter with a convolution on an image with an X in it, then we can see that the output actually has the highest activation, where an X shape has been found within the source image. And so this filter allows for us to effectively filter out certain patterns from the image. So basic filters early in the network help the network discover basic features. For example, if we want to do edge detection, we have this filter on the left, which is basically just going to find a difference between the values of one pixel and the pixels around it. We can similarly specifically filter for horizontal edges or vertical edges. But now there's one last big question. How do we come up with these filters? And that's the best part. We don't have to. In the context of a neural network, the filter is the weight. So if we go back to our original example here, we actually only have one single input, and that's going to be our dog image. And we have these weights coming off of it. Each of these could be a specific randomly initialized filter. And then once we go through the training process, we just have to use backpropagation in order for these filters to become closer to representing our data set. So the model designer doesn't actually need to know what filters we need up front. That all can be figured out through backpropagation. And I think that that's really cool. 
After the convolutional layer, we add a few fully connected layers, and those fully connected layers are where the brains of the operation occur. So we can use the convolutional layers to be our eyes, and the fully connected layers to be brains. And that's it. I know that there are several key details left out in this video, but my goal really is to lower the intimidation aspect of getting into machine learning. Because once you understand the base concept, it's really just a matter of formalities and figuring out mathematical notation to get more information. So this is kind of a starting point. I hope that this can inspire some people to go out and learn a little bit more about machine learning. If you haven't seen my backpropagation video, that's probably a great place to start. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.